right, hello everyone and welcome to tonight's video. In this video, I'm going to be doing Nahida Story Quest Act 2, Part 3. Uh, I didn't think that there would be a Part 3, but apparently there is, because uh, even though everything seemed to have closed out after Part 2, once we had the next daily reset, Part 3, or what I assume to be Part 3, showed up as a world quest. So if I've re I'm putting the I'm recording this in case it is part three and if it's on YouTube and you're watching it, it's part three. All right, so let's talk a little bit about lore that was kind of dropped in on at in part two because I, I I hear a lot of people buzzing about it. I didn't really think it was that big a deal. I thought it was more if it was anything, it was kind of more. Uh, uh, a rehash of some of the lore that we've already had, uh, particularly dealing with the Heavenly Principles and and the relationship of the Heavenly Principles and the Archons. So the Heavenly, we see the sustainer of Heavenly Principles at the very beginning of this game. I mean the very, very beginning of this game. So um, I'm unclear on whether that entity is the heavenly principles that we refer to, part of the heavenly principles, or someone who uh, who uh, serves the heavenly principles, uh, as the archons apparently do as well. So, as far as that, so, putting that aside, uh, uh, we have the archons. They have the gnosis that apparently allow them to connect to the heavenly principles. And we have the harbingers that have been that have been collecting these uh, uh, left and right. So the the harbinger story, I think we're all kind of, I think a lot of us are kind of assuming that this is going to become something of a of an Infinity War story where they're going to collect all the gnosis, put them all together, and something happens that we're not that we're not going to like. At least that's what it, what seems like they're building to it. Um, so if we're assuming that the Heavenly Principles are kind of the last boss of the story, uh, it is it is worth thinking about like how much uh, of how much assistance are we going to get from the Archons once we get to that part of the story? Um, and I, I, to to be honest, I, I'm kind of not sure. Um, certainly. Uh, a lot of what the archon, when the archons talk about the heavenly principles, and they talk about, and, and you see what they, how they handle their gnosis, not not me, most of them are kind of uh, ambivalent at best to the to the heavenly principles. John Lee and Nahida both barter their um, gnosis away. Um, uh, Raiden a essentially gives her gnosis to Yaimiko, who then gives it to the to to the harbingers. Uh, the only one who who really kind of loses his gnosis uh, uh, without just simply giving it away is Venti. And and that's kind of why I'm a little bit unsure about Venti and where and where his allegiance ultimately lies. But, but uh, admittedly, I do not have any hard proof of that beyond just that observation. The fact that he's the only one that lo that doesn't lose his gnosis voluntarily, or at least that's what it looks like. It could be that he he made a he he had an agreement with uh, with uh, Senora to to make it look like they, they that, that she took his gnosis. I believe. She was the one who did that. But anyway, um, getting back to this. So, uh, so that was so the reference to the archons being kind of the gods that the dragon didn't really care to go and defeat. Um, that supports the heavenly principles. I think that I think we we've been kind of covering that little by little as we've been going along. So it didn't really dawn on me that that would be anything specifically uh, big in this story. Um, but as far as the rest of the story goes, I'll just uh, 
out of your crystal. Now, what I was kind of thinking we would, this would do, is it would kind of give me some kind of, give us some kind of introduction into this new area of the map that was given to us in this new patch. And it didn't, so I'm kind of one, so I'm kind of wondering if that's not what introduces us to this area of the world, this area of the desert, what if. So I'm gonna kind of leave that alone for now. I might, I might uh, I'm going to be doing a stream a little bit later, to, later tonight, probably as soon as I finish this video. So I might be, uh, that, I, I might be uh, getting into that sooner rather than later. But let's see where this. Uh, the evening breeze is like a melody. It's right over there somewhere. They gave me a column of light earlier, but uh, um, but I guess they must must have given up on me. But I'm I'm going to do it. Now I, I I have heard from someone who has done this before and didn't that tried not to spoil anything that this can be a little bit on the sad side. Um, and so I, uh, maybe I should start cautioning my audience on potentially sad stories because I've noticed that uh, the Genshin Impact community as a whole does not handle sad particularly well. And you, actually, I've been uh, I've kind of watched some other um, streams thinking, thinking, I wonder how they're going to handle this. It's like, like you could almost see as soon as something sad's about to happen, the audit, the other people in the chat start talking about literally everything else but the game. It's like, like it doesn't happen up to that point, but once it start, once sad's about to happen, that's when people start getting talking. So, uh, I, and it's funny because some of the people, some of the streamers, uh, I've talked to them about this. It's like that they say, well, this this didn't really grab me. It's like, well. You know, it's hard to, hard for a story to grab you when you're talking about five other things. So, um, but I mean, it, it, to each their own, I say. Um, you know, if if, you, if 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 sad's not a thing for you, and say, I, I completely understand that. I had to. I have a bachelor's degree in film studies. I've had to watch my share of depressing films, and particularly a lot of friends. Some of those, can, uh, yeah. But given that I've done that, I feel like this is probably not gonna phase me as much. There's some tissues right over there, just in case. I don't think I. But uh, I, I have. I kind of got the sense from the from the quest itself, and I'll just kind of mention it. Does the elemental life forms family linger around for a long time? In order for them to be reunited one day, you have to first properly deal with the parting in the present moment. So we're kind of waiting for Godot here. So uh, let, let's just let's just do it. I don't think it's going to be. I, don't th I think it's going to be a little sad, but I'm, but I'm not. I'm predicting it's not going to be as bad as this was advertised. To. And of course, it's not going to be voiced because it's a world quest. So I'm going to read it out myself, but I don't. I'm, I don't expect me to do a bunch of different things. So I don't really. I don't do that when I do the world quests in the on my Twitch stream either. So I really want to do something for them so that they'll have a chance to meet again. Down apart from these two fungi, Paimon's also a word about the floating animal fungus. Oh yeah, that's right. There's two of them. But I thought they were all together. And I feel the same. I have an idea. Why don't we bring them over to live with the other fun guy? Well, that I thought that. Okay. Well, I thought they were already doing that. But okay. Both sides have previously lived in the presence of an elemental life form. So their habit should be similar. Yeah. So they can look out for each other. Would you like to come with us? Question mark, musical note, tilde. I'm not gonna, no, I, I, that, that's it, I'm not gonna, not gonna translate. No. 
Looks like it's been convinced. Okay, let's go. If I remember correctly, the other camp isn't that far ahead. Or he might be just fast traveling to the other camp. Yeah, I know some other other streamers who, who do the world quests can give each character a different voice. Not that good with voices, unfortunately. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, to make you watch a bunch of, or listen to a bunch of very badly voiced over. Um, seems like the fun guy here recognizes us. They're so friendly and gentle. I want to say stay friendly and gentle. That's, that's going to go a long ways with me. That elemental life form must be held in high regard by everyone living. Huh? Are you trying to play with Paimon? Oh, okay then. Traveler Paimon will be over there playing with the fun guy. Have fun, Paimon. I owe you an apology. When the fire seed shattered while we're inside APEP, I had plans to sacrifice my power. No kidding. Paimon tell you that? I was a little worried. No, I wasn't worried at all, but let's, let's say she was. I wasn't calm enough. I should have given it some more thought and made better judgment of the situation. My realized Dendro Dragon was in danger and its marrow's safety was being threatened. I couldn't help but feeling, couldn't help feeling anxious and scared. But I decided not to take action when it's, things can still be done or if time ran out before I've used up all my energy. Using my powers may be the easiest way out, but it's also the most difficult. You still have room for growth. I mean, she's very little when it comes to deities right now. Yes, and I think I learned a lot from her. I understand what it means to have their wishes come true. I'm still unable to accept it. Why did it sound so peacefully content with when I was doing something that just makes you want to cry. Looks like I still haven't fully grasped the concept of empathy. No, no, this isn't your fault. Well, thank you for comforting. Feelings are really complex things and there's still a lot for me. Huh? Fungus talking. They're even taking care of the crops. Are they simply mirroring the elemental life form's behaviors? But since that fungus even learned to speak, all of this might be due to the long-term effects of the elemental power. Time is powerful. That's right, now we don't have to worry about the safety of these two fungi anymore. From now on, I'll be keeping an eye on this fungi camp and come check on them once in a while. I want to preserve the traces they left behind in order to create an opportunity for them to meet in the future. After all, that fungi remembered the name Nur. Its memories came back. I believe in miracles. Let's think of it as a beautiful wish then. Ida, the fungi brought over some fruit. Come have some. That's it. Huh. He does not hear anymore. It's just a hydro. Oh, the, the animal fungi aren't here either. Oh, well, they're happy. I wonder if this camp is still going to be here back at a later time. Well, well, okay, so this, the, these fields were there, but the camp was somewhere else, right? This, this was over way before, I, I thought this was going to be a, I, I, I had planned a lot, I had planned a lot more time. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised it's done already. Pyro fungi over there. That's not oh, okay. Well, this is this is in the Avidia forest, or, or not? 
Yeah, that this this forest right here. Okay, well, um, cool. I guess that's it then. It wasn't much for rewards either, but I, I think it was still, I mean, I'll, I'll still put post this on YouTube because it was a good kind of way to um, kind of close out. Let me just make sure. Let's make sure that there's nothing else that's going to, nothing else in the world quests to be worried about. Okay, so um, I think just maybe even just for the sake of my, uh, my commentary on the lore and commentary on, yeah, I, 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 my commentary on, you know, uh, on uh, Genshin Impact players sometimes just not wanting to feel anything. Uh, um, I think I'll just leave it up, just just for the fun of it. And don't don't if you if you are one of the the uh, streamers or players for Genshin Impact who fall into the category of that you just want action and excitement and you don't want feelings and emotions I, I it's it's we all play we all just play play this game different i am i am always up for the story i'm always going to think of a game like this in terms of the story first and in terms of the battle second so i am always going to be right there uh doing all doing as many of the story archon quests and story quests as soon as they come out and then just floundering around with spiral disc because spiral disc is the spiral disc. I probably have at least two years before I really have to be. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like and please con consider subscribing to this channel and following me on Twitch where I will be streaming uh, momentarily in terms of real time. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Of, tell me what you thought about this uh, quest, e either this specific part of, this, of the quest or overall. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought I thought that they did a lot of very interesting things in terms of the prerequisites. So, and if there is another part of this that will pop up later, I will cover it another video, but for now, I'm going to assume that this is it, and I will see you in the next video.